Hi, this is part two. So from part one, we obtained this result. After doing various substitutions, eliminating j and rho, and various tricks for partial derivatives. So now, let's move on. Okay. So what we can do is, this won't do anything, but it'll help make things look symmetric. So let's add on this term. So add on. 1 over mu naught, the divergence of b times b. Okay. So now, we're, it's okay to add this on because the divergence of b is 0. So div b equals 0. Okay. That's from one of Maxwell's equations. So now, from the product rule, we see that Take the gradient of electric field squared, we get 2 times the electric field dot del times the electric field plus 2 times the electric field cross the curl of the electric field. Okay. So now we can solve this for e cross del e cross the curl of b e, which is in our equation above so e e cross the curl of e gives us one half of the gradient of electric field squared <coughs> minus e dot del e. Okay. So, this is going to be a handy result to use. Okay. Now, similarly for the magnetic field, we do the exact same thing, just replace e with b. You can see that b cross the curl of B you can see that gives us one half grad of B squared minus B dot del B so this is another handy equation okay so now Plugging it, plugging this, plugging these equations, so I'm going to call, plugging equations one and two into there, we get, get F, force per vol unit volume, is this really ugly formula. So, epsilon sub naught del. Dot e divergence of e times electric field plus e dot del times e plus one over mu naught of del dot b times b plus b dot B. So you can see why I added this um, term. It makes everything look symmetric with the electric and magnetic field. So it's very symmetric except this constant out front. Yeah. Okay. Uh, then we have another term. Actually, we have another term from this previous one uh, from see previous term right here we have to include this term so we have substituted equations one and two for this whole expression now we're going to deal with this so we have some minus epsilon of partial divergence with respect to time of e cross b okay 
So this is actually a pretty nasty equation. But actually, what's useful is we can write this as a tensor. And a tensor has it's a 3 by 3 matrix, so it has nine components. So we can write this long, or actually we can write up to here as a tensor. So and I'll prove it later, but we can write this as T i j for the different indices. So it can be x y z. You can also write this as double arrow in both directions, indicating up to your two indices of this expression of epsilon times electric field EI EJ minus one half chronic root delta of E of IJ magnitude squared. And similarly for the magnetic field, it's very symmetric. Bi, Bj, minus one half chronic root delta, J, B squared. Okay, this is actually somewhat important. So even though this is one equation, this is actually nine equations. Because you have some matrix or Tij looks something like Txx, Txy, Txz, Tyx, Tyy, Tyz, Tzx, Tzy, Tzz. Okay. So that's what this translates to. It's three by three matrix. And the chronic root delta, if you haven't known, if you don't know this, that you can learn now. Chronic root delta, it equals 1 if i equals j, and 0 if i does not equal j. Okay. So, this is a somewhat review of linear algebra. It's like some i by some j so it's i by j poorly drawn matrix but okay so i'll prove this to you that this expression so i obtained this expression by taking the divergence of t of this tensor and if you look at the dot product, that actually that del is actually some summation. I'm not gonna write the that del del sub i the ith component is equal to d by dx sub i. Where i runs from one to three. This is actually a summation, but I'm not going to put the sigma. So I'm going to put the sigma here. But also, since the, this is i by j, and from linear algebra, we get a column vector. So we should expect a one by three column vector. One column, three rows three entries per row. Okay. So so actually when we take the dot product of this, we get the J component. Okay. And I'm gonna insert the sum equals the summation from I equals XYZ, because we're doing it over three dimensional coordinates times d by di dot the tensor, Maxwell stress tensor. Okay.
So, alright, so now we actually have to apply this. So, uh, let's, okay. apply this. Okay. So, by doing this dot product, you can see that epsilon sub naught. Epsilon sub naught sigma over i from i equals x y z of d by d i just taking the product rule of e i e j plus <coughs> okay plus e i partial derivative with respect to i of e j. Okay, and then chronic or delta term of minus one half of di or of chronic or delta ij of d partial with respect to i of e squared my tooth electric field squared. Similarly for the magnetic term, magnetic field. So we get one over mu naught summation from i equals x y z of three dimensional coordinates. It's the exact same thing for the electric field, to be more precise. B I J. Minus one half. So now we have that, and recall from uh, that little formula I gave you guys on um, how this is actually a sum over i. So by inserting the del operator into here, to here, 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 we can see that this can be written as epsilon sub naught times divergence of E, divergence of E, and we have an EJ out here, electric field of EJ, it's not a vector, plus E, EI, of ej because I can exchange the ei and ej to get this it's a dot product rule minus one half j of e squared for all the components of d by dj So now for the magnetic field, exactly the same, different letters. So okay. So this crazy equation has been proved by using this tensor notation. Okay. So, so let's go back to the initial problem we were looking for and finding the force. So, but we know that, um, actually, I forgot one more thing, this term right here. Uh, the, this, this term, the minus epsilon sub naught d by d t of e cross b. If you recall from your earlier uh, EM classes, that this is the pointing vector, which is to be defined as one over mu naught of e electric field cross b. Okay. 
So now, by substituting that in, we get the force per unit volume. So force per volume. Okay. Is equal to the divergence. It's equal to, di to the divergence of the Maxwell stress tensor. minus epsilon naught mu naught ds dt. But if you recall that the speed of light squared equals oops, that c equals 1 over the square root of epsilon sub naught mu naught. That's the speed of light in a vacuum, which is approximately equal to 3 uh, times 10 to the 8th meters per second. Okay. So we can replace mu naught, epsilon sub naught, just reducing the number of constants we use by the speed of light squared, 1 over the speed of light, so we get more precisely, we get the force per unit volume, so divergence of the Maxwell stress tensor, minus 1 over c squared of ds dt. Sorry for my bad handwriting. Okay. So now recall that this is the force per unit volume. And we're going to be integrating over a volume. So we want to have the total force, which is equal to the volume integral of some volume V of F dV. Okay. So now we can insert this here. So we get the force equals triple integral, or the volume integral of the divergence of the tensor, Maxwell st stress tensor, dv minus 1 over c squared. I'm going to pull out the uh, partial with respect to time out, so I can get a ordinary derivative times the triple integral, the volume integral of s dv. Okay. So this is the divergence theorem. If you've taken calculus three or multivariable calculus, I can write this as a surface integral over some boundary S. Of T dot dA. D is the area vector. So this is force. So this is a, a therefore statement. So therefore the force equal to the surface integral of the Maxwell stress tensor minus uh, 1 over c squared times the triple integral over some volume v of ds dt with respect to the volume. Okay, So we finally have arrived from ugly equations to a more delicate equation. Alright, thanks for your time guys, and see you in part three where we go in a little bit more on how to calculate um, this, what goes in these uh, matrices.